That is that is so bad. Look look at all that on my hands. I reckon I'm gonna have to cut that bit of pipe out because look at that. Welcome to today's video, everyone. Slightly different. There's a twist to this one. So the job was meant to be a power flush, a massive power flush, 28 radiators, I think it was. And the system was, well, you see as the video progresses, stuff happened that wasn't supposed to happen. Things didn't quite go to plan. And it didn't end how it was supposed to end, let's just put it that way. So. I'll leave it at that. Have a watch of the video. Let me know what you would have done in the same situation as well. Watch it till the end. You'll find out what happens and what the next step is. Uh, drop a comment below. Yeah, let me know what you guys would have done in, in this situation. If you would have done the same or if you would have done anything different. Be interesting to know and share ideas and opinions. Enjoy the video and I'll see you all on the next one. Welcome to today's job. Power flush. Big power flush. 28 radiators and they are all either column or cast iron rods. So a bit of a history behind the job itself. So customers said that they started having problems last winter where the heating just stopped working properly. They've since had a new pump fitted. So they've got two heat only boilers here, two pot and suprema's. This system has been sealed. The domestic side is still open vented. There's a cold water storage tank up in the loft. And underneath here, we've got a 2580 pump. So that's an eight meter head pump, which is fine considering the size of the property. Two massive expansion vessels. So the system has been sealed and they're still having problems with heat getting around everywhere. So we're, we've been drafted in to do a power flush here. Now it's not my job, it's uh, Kara's job. So we're gonna be doing the best that we can to try and get the system up and running. But now that I'm here and having had a look at this system and the way, the size of the system, me personally, I would have gone for a, a low loss header and another external pump. It's on a Y plan. We've got a three port tucked away in the corner there. Primary is all, I think, what's that, 35 mil pipe work, I think? Yeah. So big, big primaries, 35 mil pipe work, 20, going reducing that to 28. So there's going to be a lot of flow behind it. So hopefully this bad boy will be able to keep up with everything. I'm going to be going straight up to the pump valves there. And it looks where they've had the pump change recently, or last year, I believe. I'm hoping the pump valves hold. I need to take out the bypass there and cap that off as well and then obviously open the three port to put it just into the heating circuit so that it doesn't flush through the cylinder coil as well but yeah i if i was here sort of last year when they had all this other stuff done i probably would have rejigged the whole thing and advised them to put in a low loss header which would then give better heat distribution to the whole system and probably wouldn't have needed two boilers either i reckon one large system boiler would have been enough like a valent 637 that would have done the low loss header and then put another light commercial pump an eight meter head pump on the other side that would do the rest of the heating system it's similar to the job that i'd done where we took out two combis and put in a system boiler with a low loss header it worked a dream so we're going to do a power flush today Obviously, they're all cast on radiators and column rods, so we, I know that they collect a lot of dirt anyway. Hopefully, the power flush sorts the problem out. If not, we'll have to make a plan to see what else we can do, but it's all we're just going to come down to budgeting and stuff like that. So I've got everything here. I've got a lot of space here to set everything up. So if I'm talking really like monotonous, it's because I've had about four hours sleep and I'm absolutely shattered and it's going to be a long 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 day today as well so yeah excuse my lack of enthusiasm at the moment hopefully once the caffeine kicks in i'll perk up a bit and once i start seeing results from the power flush machine i'll perk up a bit but for now i'm gonna isolate the pump valves get the pump out get this set up get this heated up 
and then we'll just wait for Kara to get here and hopefully by the time this will be hot enough and we can start flushing. I'm probably going to get the boilers fired up as well so that as we're flushing, I'm, because I'm going to be flushing through the boilers as well, I'm going to be just going in one direction through the natural direction of flow. So I'll probably get the boilers on as well to get them to heat up the water quicker as well as we're, as we're circulating. So yeah, let's uh, let's get that connected up first. All right, let's see if this pump valves hold. I've shut them off already. Oh, let's get the little bucket bag underneath. I'm assuming that they do hold because someone's changed the pump last year. And I usually find on sealed systems they're okay. It's usually when it's open vented. But then again, I think there's a lot of muck in this system. So let's find out and make sure I've got this up to the right size. Let's see. Yeah, it seems to be okay. That's a good start. Oh. I'm just gonna sorry. oh, sorry. I didn't realize you were behind me there. No problem. Have a look at this. So all I've done, you've seen, I've just opened up the pump valves to let the water into here. That is chocolate, chocolate sauce. So definitely got a hell of a lot of dirt in the system. It's gonna be a long day. It's gonna be a dirty, dirty flush. So now I'm gonna take the bypass off, cap it, so that we're not gonna get anything circulating around there. Well, let me turn this on and get it hot as well. So that's gonna start heating. Then we start flushing and uh, get the boilers fired up as well at the same time. Got a bit more proof. So I've just taken the bypass out there. And let me see if, I don't know how clear it will come up on camera, but that 22 mil pipe, look at all that dirt in there. That is completely chock a block. Let me show you the bypass. I'm guessing this wasn't bypassing. Is that completely blocked up so yeah I'm gonna cap that off and then obviously we'll clean this up before we put it back I might get the wet back on it may probably at the end actually I don't want to start doing stuff to it now I'll probably get the wet back on it at the end to try and suck out all the muck that's inside there but literally if I just put my finger in there that is wow Yeah, definitely blockage in the system somewhere. Right, I need to set the camera down, try and get that capped off there. Okay, that side's all capped off, but this one I'm just feeling underneath and oh my God, there is literally a, that is block solid. Let me see if I can get a, uh, a screwdriver or something in there, jam it up. and see what it releases. It's literally like it's plugged. Oh my God. I might even have to cut this out. Jeez. That is that is so bad. Look look at all that on my hands. I reckon I'm going to have to cut that bit of pipe out. Because look at that. This system is bad. Okay, so little update. The job's off. <laughs> wow. So after showing the customer the amount of dirt that 
I picked out of that system, we came up with a plan because she's got some medical issues which she needs to address. She's got some surgery coming up over the next few weeks. And we explained all the risks to her that if we do the power flush today, there's no guarantee that it's going to clear it because of how much dirt there's in the system. It's likely we're going to have to potentially repipe certain sections of it where it's that badly blocked up. And not only that, there's two heat on your boilers there. And we were going to be flushing through the boilers as well because there's there's no way of isolating them. And it's all 35 mil pipe work on there. So I, I don't have the right size isolation valves and stuff like that, even if I wanted to. <coughs> now, the risk is if we were to flush with the boilers, it could clog up the boilers. Now, they aren't in a financial position to be able to replace the boilers right now. And I haven't got the time to do it. Neither has Cara because that system needs a complete overhaul. It needs a bit of an upgrade. So I showed her the pictures of the one that I'd done previously. You guys might have seen the video where we took out the two combi boilers and put in a system boiler with a low loss header. And that system worked like a dream. So I showed her those pictures and I said, this is the kind of system you want. There's 28 radiators on that system, big boy primaries, and it needs a power flush. Definitely, 100% needs a power flush. But the amount of dirt that's in there, it may need more than a power flush as well. So we may have to find where there's certain blockages, try and repipe certain areas. If that bypass was a 22 mil bypass and that was that badly blocked up, I'm, I wonder what the TRVs are like because they're on 15 mil. So they're going to be blocked up as well. So it could have been, this job basically could have been a massive can of worms if I just pushed ahead and said, no, 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 we've got a power flush, we've got a power flush, we've got a power flush. We're here now, we've got to do it. Sometimes we have to take the sensible decision, take a step back, look at the overall picture and then decide, is it worth doing it today? Or do we walk away from it today, come back with another plan and then do the whole thing properly when we've got the time to do it? Because they do have heating at the moment. The property is over three floors. It's a massive house. So they've got heating upstairs, but they haven't got heating downstairs. So they they can still currently use fan heaters or electric heaters at the moment downstairs but if the boilers get blocked up that badly they could be without heating or hot water and she can't afford to do that at the moment with her upcoming surgery and everything so we called it a day collectively we gave her the option but ultimately allowed her to make the decision that yeah we'll call it a day today we're not going to power flush we'll, we didn't even start so Took it all out, disconnected it back in the van and I'm home now. But we are going to be looking to go back in the new year to basically do an overhaul on the system. So get rid of the two heat only boilers, look at putting in a system boiler with a low loss header, um, converting it from Y plan to S plan and then doing basically just getting the system up to scratch how it should be. Fortunately, she was a very understanding lady. Her husband's self-employed as well. So she understands and she appreciates that we've obviously booked out a whole day's work for this. So we didn't charge her for the power flush, but she did offer to pay us our day rate for obviously coming out today because now by the time I've got home with the traffic, it's already 20 to 2. So there isn't much I can do today and it would be quite difficult. So for me to try and book in work like sort of last minute, so, yeah, you know, understandably, she's paid me and Cara our day rate, which I really appreciate. And even if she didn't, I mean, I know we're going to get a bigger job back in the future. So it, for me, it wasn't about the money today. If it was about the money, I would have pushed on and said, no, I'm here. I need to get paid. I need to do the power flush. It wasn't about the money. I just I, I didn't want to start a job today where it's going to turn into a can of worms and potentially leave them in a worse off situation where we can't fix it straight away. So. That's how we've left it and I'll update you as and when we do the job but it's probably not going to be into the new year anyway. Probably not until summer because if something's going to go wrong it's fine. Like They've got the emergency for hot water but at least if they haven't got heating it's not the end of the world because it will be warm hopefully at that time of year. That's where we are. I'll keep you guys posted.